Hey guys, welcome back again to another technology guru video. A lot of times people ask me on YouTube, how do you record your screen? How, how do you, what software do you use? Well, I'm going to be doing a beginner's tutorial on how to use ScreenFlow. Now, ScreenFlow is an application you can purchase off of the website or on the Mac App Store. I'll put a link for both in the description box below. Uh, and you can just purchase this, you know, it depends on if you've already owned a previous version or if you're getting a new version, uh, that will depend on the price that you will be paying for that. So I'll put the links here in the description box and then you guys can kind of see uh, the price range for this software. So ScreenFlow allows you to edit and record your screen as well as take audio from a microphone or a webcam or an internal microphone that you may have on your computer. So the first thing you want to do when you boot up ScreenFlow is you need to know how to record, you know, how do you start recording? Well, if you look up in the upper center of the screen, you will see a little video camera icon and a dark circle in the center. This means that I am recording. If I click this, it will say my record time stop record or pause. Now if I stop the recording now obviously that will stop the recording. If you are not recording there will be an option here at the top that says record and you click on that and it will give you a countdown timer 5, 4, all the way to 1 and then you will start recording your screen. Now, I have an external USB microphone that I have plugged in. It's a Blue, uh, Blue Yeti microphone that I have. And uh, I actually, you know, I'm running it via USB into my computer. So I'm recording the audio with that. So you can use, again, your internal microphone or your webcam microphone. It really does not matter. Now, once you have recorded a screen capture, it will then open up this panel here. This is where you edit the screen capture. Here is a previous tutorial that I have done on how to change shortcut keys in Photoshop. And if you notice down here, there is a timeline. The timeline will be what you see right here, okay? The timeline is on the bottom of the screen here. So all of this area here, this is the time, the timeline. Up here is where you will see your video in action. Okay, so right here is what your video is, and down here is where you add all of the, the good stuff, okay? So right here you'll see the screen recording itself, okay? So the video capture is here, and the audio you'll see in little WAV files right here. And you want those two to match up, and you can always move those around. So you click and hold, and you can move the audio around, and then you can also move the video around by doing that there. Now that's where you do all of your you know, editing and, and all of that good stuff down here. Over here in the upper right hand corner, okay, this is where you do, you know, all of your tools are located. The first one right here are the video properties. Now, when you see on a screen capture where the, the video zooms in to a specific part of the screen. In order to do that, all you have to do is add a video action, okay? And once you add a video action, you have to have the screen capture area selected down here in the timeline. You'll see a little line pop up there on top of the screen recording. This means you have now added a video cue. And what you will do now is you will go ahead and zoom in where you want it. So now, see, I'm scaling that up, okay? So I've scaled it to about 144%. Now I can go over here to the screen, and I can click and hold, and I can drag this wherever I want it on my screen. So if I want to focus in on these tools over here in the upper right-hand corner, I'll just do that by zooming in. And again, when you're ready to zoom out, you just add another video action here, zoom back out to 100%, okay, wherever that may be and then click and hold here and fit your video back in the screen there where the video is recording. So that's how you add video actions. You can also rotate the screen. So if I click on the X rotation axis here, it will rotate the screen, okay? So that's what that's doing, and I'm going to undo that now. You can do that on the Y and Z axis as well. You can also change the opacity of the screen by increasing or decreasing that here. You can also crop it as well. Add reflections and shadows and all kinds of stuff within the video properties. Next, you'll see your audio properties. You again have to have your audio selected within your timeline in order to edit that, you know, the audio. So you'll add an audio action by clicking on this gray button here. When you click on add an audio action, you can add all types of different things. You can adjust the volume of that audio track. You can add ducking. Now what ducking is, that will allow you to 
take the volume of other active audio clips in the timeline and it will reduce those sound when this is detected. So if you have like music in the background, it will reduce the sound of that music while you're talking so it doesn't overbear your voice. You can also mute the audio for specific parts of the clip. Uh, you can smooth those volume levels and you can also add effects. So you can click on the effect option here and add effects. All of these effects here that you see, you can add those to your audio. And there's a few other things there that I'm not going to cover. Next, you will see your screen recording properties. This is where you add a pointer zoom. So if you see where the the, the video shows the, the mouse pointer and it zooms up on that. So what you do is you select the video uh, screen capture down here in your timeline and then add a screen recording action. So if you want a pointer zoom, you click and hold there and that will actually make your pointer of your mouse a lot larger than it normally would be, okay? And then you can also add a click effect. So whenever you click, you'll see a green or blue circle around that area. You can also change your pointer to be a dark or light circle or a square or even any image that you choose. Also, you can change the opacity of your pointer as well. You can also click this here to show keystrokes. This will show anytime you type anything on the keyboard, it will show up on the screen here, which is a great, great way to show people how you're typing on your keyboard when you're doing tutorials. Next, you will see the callout option. The callout, if you add one of those, will allow you to zoom up on where your pointer is or your mouse cursor, as well as add a border, make it larger, Larger, make it smaller. You can add an outline, which I always like to do. So do that there. And then you can also add a shadow. So I click on the shadow option here, and this will add a shadow to my border. So all of that is done within the callout options there. Next, you'll see your annotations. So what is an annotation? An annotation is this. When you add an annotation, it will allow you to add like a box or a circle or an arrow pointing out something significant in your video. So if I select Add Annotations Clip, and again, you need to select your video capture down here in the timeline, I can actually go here, click on the arrow, and then add an arrow on my screen pointing at something important on the screen here. And with anything that you add over here, if you go down to your timeline, you can double click on it and change the duration of how long it will last, okay? And you can also right click on things that you add and do a number of things like add a transition when they're starting, add an ending transition when they leave the screen, or add both, okay? You can do all of that by right clicking on that section of the video in the timeline. So that are, that is annotations. Obviously text is fairly self-explanatory. When you select the text option here, make sure you again have your video selected down here in your timeline and click on add text box. Once you've added the text box here, you can now click and hold and drag the text wherever you want it on your screen, double click within the box and then start typing. So whatever you want to type, go ahead and type that and then it'll automatically have a background, automatically have a certain font. In order to change all of that, go into the settings over here where the text settings are and it's pretty much like a Word document. Uh, you can go in, center the text, bold it, change the font, do all of that over here and again when you're ready you can double click or right click down here and adjust the starting and ending transitions as well as the duration of how long the text will be in your you know, video. Next and lastly will be your media. This is where I add my intros and outros. So if you have any other images that you want to add or another video that you want to add, all you need to do is select the video down here in the timeline, go select Add Media, which is right here in the lower left-hand corner, and click on that. It will then pop up your, you know, your files on your computer, okay? Once you're there, you can select images, whatever you want to do. So if I have an image here on my computer, I will just click on that image and then click open. That image now becomes available to me over here in my media option over here. I click and hold that and drag it onto my screen and I now have an image within my video. So I'm going to delete that now. So guys, that's a little bit about ScreenFlow 4.0. This is the newest version of ScreenFlow. This is part one. I'll do another video that will be part two showing you how to do more of the nitty gritty of the editing within the timeline. I hope this video helped you out. If you want to download ScreenFlow, go ahead and look in the description box. I'll drop the links down there. This is a great and wonderful program 
program that I've been using now for over a couple years. I really do enjoy it. I hope this video again helped you. If it did, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for more great content like this. Go ahead and share this video with your friends, family, and anybody else you can think of, and I will see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.